Hi, this is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing our weight loss vlog. Today I'm going to go over a recent article published in the journal Obesity about the effects of resilience on changes in diet and weight gain. So at the end, we'll go over some information that I have certainly observed with using the medication Munjaro or Trizepatide and some of the cautions we have there. So with, uh, with resilience, this is an important thing and something that is not talked about enough. There are things that you can do in your life to improve resilience, and we'll go over that. Um, this is an area uh, that, that I'm quite interested in, and I was preparing a talk for something else, or actually uh, something I'm writing up for, for a different project, and I came upon this article, and it is really very interesting. So genetically, you can pick mice that are either resilient or not resilient and they will differ in their response to being fed a high fat diet. Now, the resilient mice are called dominant mice and the non-resilient mice are called submissive mice. So, it, you know, the article sounds like something out of, you know, 50 shades of gray, but it's not, you know, they're mice and it's about weight. So this, um, the resilient mice uh, had a much different result after being fed a high fat diet than did the non-resilient mice. And uh, when they were fed a high fat diet, the resilient mice did not have as much weight gain. And there is some gender difference, males versus females, but um, they also tended to have uh, lower fasting glucose levels, uh, lower leptin levels. Leptin is a hormone that has a lot to do with weight gain. And they had improved insulin sensitivity compared to the non-resilient mice. So Again, these are genetically predisposed behavioral characteristics uh, in terms of a, an organism, the mouse, the uh, mouse's ability to handle stressors. So um, it's very interesting then that a food stressor was also better handled by the resilient mice. So you, again, you may be thinking, well, I'm not a mouse and how does, and, and this is genetic, so how does this affect me? And I will tell you, there's a lot of uh, information out there about how it will affect you because there's a lot you can do to improve your own personal resilience. So this is an article that was published in The Lancet Psychology, so a reputable article, a reputable journal, and uh, it is about epigenetics and resilience. Now, what is epigenetics? You may be wondering, and again, a fascinating area. Epigenetics is the effect of changes in behavior or changes in environment on which strands of DNA and which code of your own DNA are turned on. There are these little things called histones and they hang around near your DNA. And when your environment changes, so if you change your diet or if you start to exercise or if you change and you start doing some meditation practice or you do some therapy or some counseling and you learn how to change your perception of threat or perception of um, bad things happening and you can change your outlook, kind of that glass half full, glass empty, half empty uh, difference between people, then believe it or not, your body will, at a cellular level, will start to turn on genes that are associated with more resilience. There are codons or parts of your genetic code that are, uh, uh, are associated with better resilience and better ability to withstand stressors. So, you know, so what are the things that behaviorally you can do? Believe it or not, big surprise. They're the same things that we are constantly talking about all the time. Um, so one thing that's very uh, crucial to resilient uh, characteristics uh, is is good secure parental care so obviously for adults you may be you know that's kind of a done deal um, but if you have children then the the care and the quality of parenting that you give them has a lot to do with their ability to withstand future things that may seem like threats or stressors um, you, regular exercise has a lot to do with your ability to be resilient. A food quality, and I think that's a very interesting uh, uh, 
name for it. So not necessarily just the caloric intake, but the quality of the food that you are eating. And I, I would encourage you to, if you haven't done this already, uh, read labels, look at the ingredients in your food, try to stay away from anything that is processed, that has chemicals in it. Um, stick to food that you could have either, you know, shot, pulled out of an ocean or pulled out of the ground or picked off a tree. I mean, in other words, you know, lean, healthy proteins, chicken, turkey, fish, uh, vegetables, fruits, uh, small amounts of red meat, uh, or again, moderate amounts of red meat if you're not having a lot of carbohydrates with them, meaning uh, you really want to get away from the processed foods, the breads, the pastas. These are inflammatory, lots of dairy. Uh, I find often people feel much better when they do something called a FODMAP diet, and you can Google that, F-O-D-M-A-P. These uh, are um, fermentable oligosaccharides. These are foods that turn into really uh, fermentable sugars very quickly in your gut. And if you Google FODMAP diet, F-O-D-M-A-P, uh, it's, uh, it's a very healthy eating strategy. It gets rid of dairy and wheat. And again, mostly focuses on food that you should be eating anyway. And most of this food, trust me, is not addicting. You're not sitting with a bunch of broccoli or a bunch of carrots thinking, God, I'm craving this, you know, and it, it just doesn't happen. So, and I would encourage you to try it for two weeks. Just, just do it for two weeks and see if you notice that you feel better. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, forget the number on the scale. Just see if you feel better because the other part of uh, these behavioral changes is that a behavior change is much more likely to be maintained if there is that kind of dopamine hit, meaning that reward closely associated with the behavior. So if you find that you start to follow a very healthy, unprocessed diet and on a day-to-day -day basis, you feel yourself better. You feel not as inflamed, not as tired. Your maybe your sleep improves. Your gut is better. You, you know you don't feel logy. Those are the types of uh, reward signals that you want to be paying attention to and be very observant of. Because if as much as you notice those, that will reinforce the behavior long term. If you just use the scale and the number on the scale as your goal then it's much harder to maintain a change in behavior. But if you are able to identify that on a day-to-day -day basis, boy, I feel so much better. That is how you improve your, uh, the, the ability to ch maintain these changes and healthy, healthy changes in behavior. And um, finally, the uh, stealing effect, which is uh, that also helps to promote resilience. The, uh, occurrence of going through a difficult time and coming out on the other end of it. So not all adverse effect is uh, has negative outcomes. Adverse effects, adverse uh, events in your life or stressors, if you are able to get through them and then you're on the other side, you find a sense of, boy, I, I was able to handle that. So that improves personal resilience. So, uh, so take a look at some of these things and then... Um, there are some, there are three qualities that you may notice in yourself. These are things that are, are not resilient characteristics. Uh, Seligman's three Ps, um, personalization, which is where you look at a stressor and you think, oh my gosh, this is all because of me. I, it was, and I mean, sometimes things are because of our own behavior, but if you internalize every kind of adverse event as being your own fault, uh, that's generally not a good resilient uh, outlook. Um, pervasiveness, meaning that if one thing goes badly, then everything in life is bad. And these are the, no matter what you say to people, they just look at all of life as, as bad. And any anything that happens that's negative, they just use to reinforce that outlook. Um, that's, a, that's a mental quality that is not going to help with resilience. And then permanence, the idea that, well, things have been bad up until this point, and so they're always going to be bad no matter what I do. Um, that is also an outlook that does not help with resilience. So look at these those qualities, and if you have any of those, you know, then you may want to talk to somebody to retrain your brain into a different way of, of uh, processing things that may be stressors in your life. So I uh, hope that is helpful for you. And then I do just want to touch on the terzepatide uh, medication, 
we have been certainly using this now for a few months, and I find that uh, this is a very expensive medicine, as you know, uh, or maybe if you haven't uh, had the opportunity to try it, um, it's anywhere from uh, several hundred dollars if you have any type of insurance coverage at all uh, to out of pocket is over a thousand dollars. And if you were even able to get some type of copay card, quite often those only last for a few months, and then you're stuck if the insurance isn't covering it, paying over a thousand dollars. So the I would encourage you strongly don't take the medicine and just think okay it's just going to do it for me and I don't have to change my behavior the medication is going to make it easier for you to change your behaviors so if you can please uh, check out the book Atomic Habits it's a great book and uh, it details how you want to change again slow maintainable methodically uh, behaviors that you can um, that will make it so that you will not have any weight regain if you have to stop any of these new medications. And if, in fact, you do have trouble either getting one of these, then I would have to say go back to the old standby. Uh, Phentermine is still cheap. It works well. I've done videos on that as well. There is, if you don't have any reasons that you can't try it, talk to your provider uh, about it and see if that is an option for you. We have some decent long-term studies now on Phentermine demonstrating pretty good efficacy and safety. Um, I would encourage you to look to that uh, path if you're having trouble uh, affording some of these newer expensive medications. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful and uh, you guys are doing a great job. Keep up the good work.